Hi, it's Sandra here from Creating Spain. And as you can see, today's video is slightly different. I'm using my iPad mini and I'm going to be doing something to show you in the Concepts app that I have. Now, if you've not come across Concepts before, it is a drawing package with a difference. It doesn't have much in common with pretty much any other drawing package that I use or is available. It is a drawing package that is definitely geared towards the future. It is an amazing piece of kit. Uh, it's recently been updated so that it has some new features and I'm only just beginning to get to grips with it and realize what I can do with it because it is designed primarily for sketching, for graphic artists and things, for people doing advertising and so on and so forth and artwork. And yes, I do quite a lot of artwork, but I don't necessarily do it on my iPad. I do tend to be a bit more of a pen, paper, marker and paint person. And so it is taking me a little while to get used to this idea of actually being able to do things on it rather than anything else. Um, the other thing that I obviously am very heavily into, as those who've watched previous videos will know, is um, electronic cutting machines, so plotters. And in order to use stuff for plotters, generally speaking, I design in software which is designed for plotters to cut with. So I design in shortcuts a lot and then I send it to the plotter, my silver bullet, and that's it. But sometimes, just sometimes, I've done some artwork and I think to myself, well actually I'd quite like to make that into a proper cut file. Now if I just wanted to cut it out, then it wouldn't be a problem. But if I want to make it into a proper cut file with drawing lines and things like that, that is a bit more of an issue. And I had a case the other day where I really wanted to do this um, polar bear that I had. I'd just done some doodling and I wanted to make it into a proper cut file with drawing lines on it. And I attempted to do it in shortcut slot and I couldn't get the thing traced to my satisfaction. So I eventually gave up with that and thought, OK, I'll scan it and put it into my iPad and see if I can do something with concepts and get it to work that way. And I did quite successfully. So what did I do? I clicked on new and it brings up my um, paper and just ignore this arc being on at the moment. At the moment I have, you can see the um, the squares here set out in a square and nine squares and that says it's in precision mode and um, precision mode in this software is quite unusual it has recognized drawing tools that are almost unrecognizable if i click on the arc for example you get this funny arc thing and you think what on earth do i do that but if you spread your fingers out it increases in size pinch it together it decreases so those people who use iPads a lot are used to this, um, but it's definitely an unusual feature. You can rotate it and so on. But then if you actually just draw anywhere outside that line, it will actually draw the arc. And you can then play around with it and make it as you want. So that is one of the functions of the precision mode. That isn't what I want it to be doing at the moment, but I just thought I'd show you. It is a very, very different drawing app. And I'm going to switch that off and I'm going to delete what I have done because I honestly don't want it. So there we go. Okay, what I do want to do is import my artwork. And I scanned it in and just loaded it up. And so if I go to get it from my library, I can get it. It's just there. There we go. My cute little polar bear, isn't he sweet? Okay, so I'm going to widen my fingers, so the opposite of a pinch basically, and make him bigger so I can see him better. Now, if I wasn't actually filming this, I would rotate it, but I've noticed that if I rotate this, 
it doesn't rotate when you're watching the movie so it might make you get a bit of a crick in the neck so I'm not going to do that. Now how would I trace him? I have several different options. One of them is to use one of the tools up here and you have a selection of tools and you can vary those tools so you have all sorts of things from an airbrush to a pen to fixed width to a fountain pen to a marker etc etc. Now this one just under the fixed width this one here if I tap on that I can alter the width of the line so really really fat to very very thin I can have it as I wish okay the next one down is the transparency so I can have it very transparent or I can have it not transparent it's up to me but the slider control changes it the next one is what I like to call the wobble factor now you know what it's like when you're using a stylus or your finger on an iPad you will not be drawing the line exactly smoothly. It's not quite the same as drawing on paper and even on paper you don't necessarily draw everything very smoothly. So this controls the wobble factor, how straight your line will be regardless of how you've drawn it. The next one is absolutely amazing. This is a Copic marker chart and you can draw or paint or whatever it is you're going to do in whatever colour you like out of the Copic selection. I don't have Copics but I can imagine those who do would really love that one. And then you go into, I say, the precision mode and you've got some precision drawing tools. Now I don't want those at the moment so I'm not going into those. So what I do want to use is my marker of a fixed width. And all I'm going to do is take my marker and draw around my bear. Now I'm not doing this accurately at the moment because yeah it's difficult concentrating on talking and doing stuff like that. I can make him bigger which makes it easier for me to trace him and because I've used a relatively thick line I can more easily follow the line that I've got. Now bearing in mind I've got this on 61% for the wobble factor it's not going to follow that line accurately. I would turn it down to actually accurately trace this, but you get the gist of the idea. And you can just keep going around until you've got your bear uh, fully drawn. And I want to shrink him, and he's not shrinking. Come on, bear, shrink. Okay. Where is my selection tool gone? Okay, selection. There we go, shrunk him back down again. Well, I better move you. Come on, move. I'm not very good at the old two finger manipulation on iPads. You'll have to forgive me on that. I am terrible at it. It doesn't come naturally to me, and I haven't used it enough to be well versed in it. Okay, so that's one way of outlining our bear. Now, if I wanted to do it a different way, I could use this tool, which is like the filled stroke. And I can again start wherever I go and go around the edges. I said I'm not doing this accurately, so I did do it accurately yesterday to make my little bear, but I'm not doing it accurately today. Okay, so there you go. You get the idea. He's all coloured in, and then that becomes a item in its own right and if I tap on him okay draw a circle right it says nothing fact of course it's there he's selected now I can actually move my bear around ah. there we go I can move the piece off and put it somewhere else um, at least people who are good at this can I really do need to practice on this one. It's great software, it's the person who's using it that's bad, believe me. Okay, so that's fine for doing the outside lines. When I want to do the inside lines, what I chose to do was to make the bear relatively big and to use a finer line and just go around all my 
inside lines. And I went around the solid areas and did those in the line fill. So I assumed that I finished doing my tracing. I then go to this top button on the left and I then find the one that I've done, which happens to be this one, and I tap and hold. And then I can choose to export it. And if I want to export it, I can export it in different ways. I can export it as a JPEG, PNG, PSD for Photoshop, DXF for AutoCAD, for example. Or in my case, I export it as SVG vector. I export it as transparent. You can transport it with a paper and grid behind it if you want to. You can choose your size and you just can click export. And what I tend to do is I then send it to myself via email. I mean, I could put it somewhere else, but I know that if I send it to myself in an email, I know exactly where it is, and I can open it up on my desktop and then do what I want to do with it. Being saved in SVG, of course, I can then open it up directly in Shortcuts a lot, and then I can change my lines to cut lines or drawing lines, whatever I want. Um, one thing that you'll notice is that I've got thick lines here and I've got thin lines. All the lines will be thin lines. It doesn't do a double line. This thick line here will still be a thin line when I export it. It gives a line down the middle of it, not one either side. So from a cut point of view, that's quite a useful function. Okay, I hope you found that reasonably useful. Thanks for watching, take care, and bye-bye.